All right, looks like we're here. Excellent. So, Heroes of the Bitter Harvest. I had a chat with uh, David Heath the other day, and uh, he was uh, giving me an update on what's going on over there, because I really haven't been, I haven't had a chance to uh, sit in on the sessions they do on the weekends and things like that. So, uh, he and I had a nice catch up. And uh, the good news is that I'll have a few things for us to have a look at. Uh, over and above what you're seeing in front of me now. And uh, there's all sorts of good stuff coming down the pipeline from Lock and Load Publishing, which makes me happy. So uh, so first things first, let's, let's have a look at Heroes of the Bitter Harvest. This is, I will call this, probably gonna use the wrong term, but it's a pre-production copy. So it's a, uh, or a pre-print copy perhaps. So the copies they send over to the publisher before the big run is done. My understanding is the run is either underway or has been done and could very well end up arriving on the shores of the United States at some point in March or thereabouts. Obviously don't hold lock and load or me <laughs> to those comments. That's just my estimation based on what uh, I recall David saying three, four days ago, and I didn't realize that this was gonna turn up so quickly, so I'm, I'm pretty excited to have a look. Now, all of you know that uh, I did receive a pre-release copy of this, uh, Valor of the 13th, and once I confirm that this little chap needs to, what, what needs to happen with him, uh, I'll probably give this away, that, that Valor of the 13th away. It is the, Counters are easy punch, you know, they're, they're the classic uh, lock and load pre-rounded easy punch counters. So they are all loose in here. That just is what it is. It's almost impossible unless you wrap these things uh, in uh, sheets to keep them uh, set. Now, uh, and in fact, so this, this whole set will at some point will be given away because I already have all of this on order. So that's... Fabulous. So someone's going to get a copy of this at some point. Now, there could well be, uh, I know that GameFound, the money was raised on GameFound. Hey, everybody. What, let's see if we've got a few folks here. Please say hi so I know who's joined us. Uh, GameFound, I think you can still do late pledges. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many are going to be kept in stock or any of that sort of stuff. Seems like some of the... Uh, supply and demand management things for gaming companies are changing and they're not necessarily always running 2,000, 5,000 uh, unit runs. They're, they're running what needs to be made for the customers that order at the time, plus a few. So it's a little bit different. So if you're interested in this and you're interested in lock and load and lock and load on the East front and tactical squad level gaming and Hollywood narrative and all that sort of good stuff, this is your Huckleberry right here. You need to go see if you can order one late. Now, this is an expansion that we'll get to, uh, Enemy at the Gates. We'll have a look at this in a second. I thought it might be more fun just to jump straight into the box. I'm gonna try and adjust the camera so that I can get a little bit up height up here and not have the camera tip over because it's been misbehaving lately. All right, here's a bit of harvest. Here we go. Well, I guess, should we look at the back? Oh my God. All right, so I'll just tell you, tell you this thing. I've got a really sore elbow, damn. And uh, <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is a heavy box. I'm gonna say this weighs at least nine pounds. So this is a massive box. Uh, We've, we've got seven maps that, that are eight and a quarter by 12 and three quarters, six counter sheets. Uh, so 475 plus counters, uh, rules, modules, booklet, solo assistant chart, 13 double-sided player aids. Of course there are 13 double-sided player aids. Uh, a single, uh, one single-sided player aid and heavy duty box and some other stuff. Some poker size cards and some tarot size cards and two, two D6 and this thing is really heavy. Wow, I'm, I quite like the box art, right? Now, you know, I know we got Devin on the cover, but you know, what are you gonna do, right? It's all good. So here we go. Now, oh, I remember, I remember hearing about this. This is an overlay, but it's a uh, three dimensional overlay. So that's kind of cool. We'll, we'll come back to that in a little bit. So rules, no, this is companion book. What is this? Is this the rule? Yeah, 
but this is all of the, uh, well, this is the, uh, all the scenarios. Or just a, no, it's just a companion book. No, it is the scenarios. Okay. So we'll, we'll have a look at that last. Cool Rules Handbook, version 5.1. This is a big, beefy uh, mofo. And I, I'm, you know, I'm going to say it's 190 pages, which is probably about right. But you've got to keep in mind that, let's see, <laughs> uh, nearly 30 of that is the index. And then we have full uh, uh, combat tables in here. And then uh, examples, extensive examples of play. And obviously huge print. I think when you break it all down and if you, if you uh, go back to the old rules, it's about 40 or 50 pages of rules. But look, there's lots and lots and lots of artwork in here, and developer notes and co new cons, you know, explaining new rules and things like that. Uh, so beefy, fantastic. Oh my gosh, that's me. How about that? All right. Uh, and stuff. Right. These are the solo cards that you will receive. You want to play this system solitaire, you can do that. So that's absolutely fabulous. I don't know what these are. These are data cards. Okay, this is this is a new a new feature. In fact, this might be if you want to play with minis. So look, there's his uh, data cards for all of the different vehicles as well. I'm not going to open all these up. So if you were playing with minis, you can have these little cards here on the side and go. Oh, I'm going to shoot my my Stug, and. Uh, Here's my, my range, my to hit, and my penetration rate. And you've got the morale and the transport capacity, so that'd be a full squad you can carry there. It's main gun, all the sort of good stuff. So very nice. Okay, I like all that. That's great. I didn't know. I forgot all this was in it. And there's all the infantry uh, units as well. Very cool. Look at that pile of stuff. Uh, once again, those that are joining, if you... Uh, hey, actually, hey, going on? I see Jeff Anderson is here as well, and Brian. All right, rainy Tampa, good to see. We uh, just had a deluge as well. Your obligatory dice. Now, we got the standard maps, right? Everybody knows that. Uh, let me, uh, do I have the X maps? And maybe this is, I'll see if this has got X maps in it as well. Okay, so this does not have X maps in it. So these are all just gonna be standard size maps. I'll be purchasing the expansion when it comes out with the X size maps. So let's have a look at the maps and see what we got. I'm gonna push the box back a bit. And they're single sided. So they're the classic, uh, classic sized. This is not going to sit up, is it? Golly. You know, it doesn't matter what I buy, how much money I spend, I can never get my stand to do exactly what I want it to do. It's always something. So, urban. It's a hard, all hard buildings there. All the highest defense ratings of those buildings. Some wheat fields, more urban, more wheat fields, a lot of maps. This is great. Okay, so a big hill here. Look at that bad boy. So that's going to go right here like this. So you can have your very visual and tangible line of sight on that. That's kind of a cool idea. I, I, that was the stretch goal, I think. Don't hold me to that either. All right, that's kind of a busy map, isn't it? Just a lot of, not gonna be a lot of lines of sight on that boy, bad boy, but awesome for ambush scenarios, which I'm sure there'll be something in there. Okay, let's keep going here and see what we got. So, turn record and sequence of play track. For all those that can't remember how to play the game, you'll need that. Then all the definitions of the step reductions here for everybody. Huh, interesting that they won't let you track. Now, I don't know why there's three passes there. One pass, two pass. Yeah, I guess that's right. Okay. Very cool. All right. Terrain effects chart. Now, this is uh, just for all of the different incremental elements that go on the map. You, you get bunkers and rubble and stuff like that. And now we have severe rubble. And 
believe there's also tunnels or something like that in this game as well, but that may not be this game. I don't know. The heroes and leaders can often uh, receive a skill, and this is a skill card for them, which is all good stuff. Give uh, all sorts of different capabilities. Sometimes it's a single use capability. Sometimes it's uh, uh, all the time. There's two of these. There's another, another one there. And terrain effects chart, 1A. So now we've got brush, your typical building stuff with the movement costs and then your target modifiers, the heights and stuff like that. Light woods and forest and dirt road. So no, it doesn't look like there's tunnels here. Now, for all those that can't do math, there are combat tables and a little bit of explanation for overruns and a direct fire summary. So you can just look at this if you need to. And on the other side, there's your results table. And this is the main side I use. I don't use the other stuff. All your modifiers are here on one chart. Now this used to all be in, in the older games, in one uh, four page foldy open doohickey, right? So uh, you've got all your mods here. I'm not gonna go double check them, make sure they're all right. I'm gonna assume they are. And then you've got your ordnance fires, your OFT shot, shots uh, when you're shooting the guns. Main guns. Now, what is this? Okay, this is just telling, this is just a little summary. So one of the cool things about all these little extra charts is that, hey, if you don't want to have to dig through the rules for whatever reason, you can grab one of your little summary charts and use it. And uh, it'll tell you, it'll tell you what's going on and how to do it in summary format. I kind of preferred the older uh, original version, which had all of these sorts of things all on one page. It was very nice. I like that, but that's okay. That's cool. If you can't do math, again, uh, how to do odds. Uh, apparently, uh, some youth today, all those young war gamers, aren't able to uh, do a ratio. So here, uh, lock and load has made it easy for you. And you want to work out uh, what six factors versus two factors is. We can see that that's going to be three to one, and it's probably a good attack. It means you've got a good chance of a good chance of uh, being successful, uh, but you don't want to do a one to three attack, right? Two two factors attacking fourteen. That's a bad thing. And then uh, the results here. What do you need to roll to get the win to get the kill on the combat? Very cool. All right, uh, reference tables. Yeah, just what what happens? What happens to guys when they're in a vehicle, outside a vehicle, when it gets shot, uh, when we get a successful OFT or DFT result or a close assault, all these little summary things that are handy dandy to have around save you opening up, <laughs> opening up the rule book. See what I mean? This is a high quality production going down. What do we got? Mike D, what's up? All right, so yeah, I am back in Texas. We got back on Sunday uh, from Tennessee. All right, outline of the game play. All of, I'm not going to, you know, if you're watching this uh, preview, then you will know, probably know a little bit about lock and load and lock and load tactical. But assuming you don't, well, let's just do a quick little summary. Beginning of the turn, you're going to roll for initiative, see who, who receives it, unless it's already allocated to you by the scenario and you're going to go through whatever rally uh actions there need to be so leaders rally first and then they can assist uh the units that they're stacked with or within their leadership range you then get straight into operations and you will then take turns activating and activate a unit or stacks of unit or units or units inside the uh the uh, commander's range uh, and then and then you can also obviously activate units that are sitting off by themselves as well, but only uh, only the only the one unit at a time. So then you're gonna you do all your movement. Uh, I was just explaining how things move together, and then how how you spot units, and then shooting, uh, and then all the different types of combat actions, 
that can occur. There's obviously opportunity fire and multiple units can combine to attack and you can fire smoke and you can fire big guns and small guns and new snipers and have scouts and mortars and there's special movement rules for leaders and uh, stealth movement and all sorts of fun stuff like that, assault movement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. And it's all fun and plays fast. Now, Russian leaders, Russian infantry, Russian sports. Oh, okay. So here, this is cool. If you want to build your own scenario, it's very nice. Off you go. Got the points for it all. Got the stuff on the back. So I'm looking for people to start, uh, you know, obviously let's go beyond what's in the box and let's create some very cool re recreations of battles that occurred in uh, the Eastern Front. Uh, in this time period that we have here. So these are the solo assistant charts. I have only played one game with a solo assistant. And I just am Captain Old School when it comes to this, and I uh, am not the right guy to walk you through all these these charts and how to do it, what to do, and when to do it. Uh, others will do that for you in their on their video channels, no doubt. I, I just played the game. I don't need all this stuff to uh, help me make choices. And there's quite a few of them because you have... Uh, you know, depending on whether you're offensive or defensive posture and you know, who to move at, who to move towards, what to move towards, when to shoot, when not to shoot, all that sort of good stuff. So there's quite a few of those charts. They'll all be going to one side for me. Won't be using any of those. We'll be playing just the game. Now, here we have the stack of counters. Oh, wait, look, here we go. There are X maps. How about that? Beautiful. Let's have a look at the X maps. Man, so it comes with the regular maps and the X maps in the box. David is spoiling everybody. Let's check these out because I love these. These are awesome. I love laying these big bad boys out. Lots of room on the hex. Much more immersive. Look at that wheat field. Oh, this is awesome. I've been, uh, this is the, uh, it's been a long time since uh, Lock and Load put a, new full module out. So hopefully they'll be able to pick up the cadence and uh, keep getting one a year out or uh, and then some expansions and life will be good. All right, so they're, they're all very awesome. Love all that. Stuka Ace is coming soon too, by the way. Jeff, I know you can see that. Uh, I'm just reading the comments here. Okay, uh, so I'm going to put all this stuff back in the box. And that's not going to fit unless I put them in properly. Now this might be, uh, actually, I don't know the, the map number. Uh, yeah, that's, I've got the game set up, guys. That's a, a, another game that is under, it's actually right here. <laughs> been struggling to find the motivation and the time. This is the first time I've done anything wargaming related other than talk to Herman Lutman uh, in January. So I've uh, just been very busy. All right, uh, so that's all that stuff. Now let's have a look at these counters. Now, a lot, unfortunately, a lot of them have come loose and I, I get it, that's okay. We're gonna try, I really shouldn't do this, but we're gonna, we're gonna open and bring them all out because I wanna see, I wanna see what's in here. Cool things I think uh, Lock and Load still has in stock is they have these ammo crates that come with three counter trays in a box. And uh, you can buy those and we'll be able to put our, our counters in there. But here we can see we've got up some guard units and then regular leaders and regular uh, infantry. And all the guard units have uh, assault movement on them. I'm going to zoom that in a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. Very well. I'm trying to throw off the camera over again. Whoa, crazy times. Uh, KV-1s, T-34, M-42s. I'm going to guess that might be, uh, is that the 75 millimeter gun? I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to try. <laughs> I was going to try and put the cameras back in the spree. That would be done. All right. 
And we have some German and uh, Russian units, Soviet units. Start down here. T-34 M42s again, T-70s. Panzer twos, Panzer three J's. Motorcycle, oh, very cool. Motorcycle uh, Germans. Uh, I had motorcycle Italians in my last uh, last scenario I played of Heroes of North Africa. And then you've got a bunch of leaders in here. Aircraft, of course. Some evil SS units by the looks of it. That's a 3J for them. And uh, oh, that's an Ilya. A crew for a German uh, SS tank. These have all got kind of bounced around, so I don't think they're in exactly the right spots. <coughs> Turret markers. All right, now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, oops. So here's an SS, uh, shoot, <laughs> uh, a little SS tank and some other t uh, half tracks, 75, the pack 40s Cool, they were not in, I think I've seen them before, so that's cool. And more Panzer fours. I like it. And uh, the new art style for all of the info markers. There's a bunch of tanks here. Let's scoot some of those out and have a look. What do we got here? Stug 3s. I'm trying to see if you can see that. Without, I'm trying to not knock the camera again. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. All right, now we're gonna zoom out. Ah, oh, you son of a gun. There we go. All right, what else we got in here that's fun, exciting, and different? Huh, new fired marker. All right, more info markers and victory hexes and objective markers and placements. The gates hole hits, if you can see that or not. And these are all the skill, skill markers. star shell and stuff so that's very cool i think that's the last one there's one more in here i'm not sure what these are maybe these are for uh the solo game i would have to look i don't know same maybe here this could be or this could be for your career if you're if you're keeping track of your guys i don't know i don't know what that's for i'm now going to put all these in this baggie i'm going to open up the next expansion, and we'll have a look at that. Oh, wait, we haven't looked at the scenarios. We can do that first, eh? I just don't want to get the expansion mixed up with uh, the main module. So bear with me here while we do that. Hey, everybody, if you've just joined, I see there's another three, four folk of just... Oh, you mother... Okay, there's a hole in the bottom of the bag. That's pretty funny. I must have pushed too hard. All right, let's get scenarios. Let's get this out of the way. Let's see what we got, because I have not really, I've read what, I read what was coming, but that was a long time ago. So looks like we've got, uh, okay, the typical, usually with this, with the, with the, what am I trying to say here? With the, these modules, when you have a scenario booklet, they typically have the national characteristics and any sort of sort of special uh, skill sets or weapons or rules that may be relevant to each particular unit or unit type. So we've got some NKVD units that are going to have, looks like they're going to have fanatic style rules. I'm trying to work out how to get this to sit so you can kind of sort of see it. Uh, NKVD are going to be dedicated to their cause. Uh, looks like you can rally one that's not in a rally eligible hex. There are commissars, 
fight or die type of bill. Uh, that's been uh, present in some other rules as well. For the motherland, Soviet can raise morale of all units in one hex. Oh, nice. That's going to cause problems for the Germans. The German forces have uh, different squad reduction values depending on if you roll a die and whether it's a odds or evens never was a big fan of that but that's fine just give me a redu reduced counter it's all good uh martyrs have no rear armor that's fine S module specific star shell capabilities gotcha and then then we get in the scenario information and data cards included in the deck of data cards that uh with all the stats any specific rules associated with each unit these data cards are de designed for reference cards and keep by the map or in your hand. Uh, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. You can also uh, use it where there's blank spaces for measurements for miniature tabletop play, which has become quite popular for lock and load. It's become very popular in that regard. Uh, okay, what do we got here? Playing, oh, role-playing campaign version one. That's what these blank dudes are for. Campaign length, up to eight scenarios, depending on what you roll here. And then end of campaign, there could be another three scenarios up to. Uh, well, very interesting. Death of your personal leader, that would suck. We'll see, I know we're gonna have to do this. This is gonna be awesome. I love this idea. And I actually, there was a scenario, oh, what was it? It might've been in the airborne expansion that had a, a leader that you could, or a counter that you could use all the way through the scenarios. Um, or maybe I just did that, I don't know, anyway. Uh, Cause I wrote those up. All right, so yeah, all right, very cool, very cool. Solo assistant, now, uh, yes, yeah, so these markers are for the solo assistant, uh, I guessed correctly. I'm just gonna skip forward past all the solo assistant stuff. Is there a assistant? Battle assistance. Oh, this is uh, building your own battles. Very cool. I love. I love all the detail that's gone into this here. This is. Uh, I've not seen this before in other modules, so this is all nice. Uh, deployment areas and all sorts of groovy stuff like that. Meeting engagements, winged aircraft, and snipers. All right, scenarios. All right, so we can just do this. We can make it be like this now. Uh, dude's got the thousand yards there. All right, so. Voronezh, 1942, two mapper. Okay, this is uh, Steel Wall, July, 1942. Big scenarios, 12 infantry, 16 infantry. Oh, uh, my goodness, yeah. Four, five, six, seven, ta six tanks and air aircraft. Four mapper. This is special uh, special rules para and paragraph. Uh, fifth tank counterstroke. July forty two. Tooth and claw of the bears. Another one. Once again, another quite large scenario with ten and sixteen counters uh, respectively. Uh, yeah, the squads I'm talking about there. Uh, so that's another long scenario. Urban renewal, uh, the multi-map, uh, multi-map city effort. Uh, hey, Eric. Uh, yeah, you've just if you've joined in late, we're looking at locker low tactical bit of harvest, uh, all the bits and pieces, uh, solo module. We just went through six or seven counter sheets and seven or eight maps and bunch of other goodies and we've still got a lot more to go through yet urban so that's all that uh stuff uh this looks like a, a farm field scenario so these are all pretty cool look at this one special rules fanatical defenders all right well it's just going on and on there are there are there <laughs> There are a lot of scenarios in here. There we go. That's it. Last one, far from home. All right. So that's that. Now, expansion though. I mean, you know, what's what's a lock and load module without enemy at the gates? And this is where I'm going to guess. 
I could be wrong because I forget what it said. Ah, come on, sucker. All right, let's just take this off. We'll just look at the main large maps. Uh, so, look at that. That's an interesting map. What, the main X map there for that one. And then this guy. Look at those hills. You guys see that? Very cool. Really interesting terrain. Hmm. 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 All right. Very cool. There's another map in here too. There's one more, I think. Maybe. Maybe even two more. Yep. So two more maps. So it's gonna. This could potentially give us some city fighting. So I guess. That looks like a factory, doesn't it? <laughs> Another factory there, perhaps. Here. Sweet. All right. Now, anyway, the gates. And then we've got the regular size, obviously. Regular size, guys. I nearly put them in the wrong box. And I'll, I, I, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to show you all the counters here, but uh, there's just more of everything. There's T -set, T-70s and T-34s and... A lot of infantry stuff. This stuff. Just trust me, this stuff. Because you're going to be using the counters off of the main module as well. So let me put this down. And let's see what we got in here. Have a look at this. Okay. Oh, expansion. Sixth Army attempt to capture the city of Stalingrad. What do you, what do you know? What a surprise. All right. And this is where we're going to be using those severe rubble markers. And uh, Maxim Machine Guns, War of the Snipers. Ah, and here's our sewer movement, and that's what that little circle on the map was. Let me show it to you there. So there's a sewer movement. We can move around somehow, some way, and reposition snipers and do stuff like that, and, uh, and uh, also uh, move units through. And then straight into it, uh, hunting in the hills. So there's one scenario there, large. Large, 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 big. Yep, big scenario. The cat wants out. Uh, August twenty seventh, four, four mapper out in the on the countryside. Another huge scenario. These are large scenarios. That's twenty, thirty squads. And here we've got ten squads plus reinforcements and tanks and all sorts of groovy stuff. And then. Uh, Inside of the docks. So this is going to be deep in September 14th. Yep, uh, 1942. Sorry for the glare, guys. Uh, special rules, sewer movement, sniper repositioning, fanatical resistance, expanded sewer network, and battlefield rubble. That probably covers it. Uh, here we have a smaller scenario with just eight squads per side and some uh, MGs and uh, anti-tank guns and bits and pieces. Very nice. And then uh, guards counterattack. All right. Into the tractor works. Oh, that's, this will be a beat down. Flamethrowers, all sorts of groovy stuff. And it's just going to be using that one, that one map there. Very cool. Very cool. There is a lot of gameplay here. Fire in the streets of Stalingrad. That's just a little tank battle by the looks of it. That's pretty cool. Three Stooks. Well, four Stooks and a uh, and four T-34s shooting off against each other. That's cute. I love it. And there's your little uh, double mapper for it. That'll be fun to play. Maybe that'll be the first one we do. Coffins and steel and oil. Now we're in October uh, 42. Medium-sized scenario of that one, even though it's a two-mapper. And I think that's the last note. One more. Armor at Pavlov's house. Okay, well, if you uh, ever played that other Pavlov's house guy uh, game, which is not really a war game, but it's kind of a war game, uh, you can uh, now re recreate that and actually play the kind of the real thing. So there you go. you got that going for you, which is nice. Um, 
Another scenario, keeping the Huns at bay. Woo. Well, I tell you what, Devin, you've unda un outdone yourself, my friend. That is an amazing uh, amount of content for the for this. Oh, Tim, uh, what what dirt do I have on the OG? No, I don't have I don't have dirt on the OG. David was nice enough to call me. Uh, Lock and Low Publishing is one of the, no, I shouldn't say one of the few. There are a small handful of companies that actually trust me to do uh, and are comfortable with me saying what I think <laughs> who share uh, pre-production and pre-release product with me. And Lock and Low Publishing is one of those. They have been a favorite publisher of mine for a long time. I've obviously enjoyed uh, Lock and Low Tactical and World of War 85 and all that sort of good stuff for a long, 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 long time. And uh, you know, David has been very supportive of my channel and uh, encouraging me to keep covering stuff and saying what I think versus just kissing ass. And so uh, the, he was kind enough to send this to me today. Uh, and I received it today, just a few hours ago. So there you have it. Enemy of the Gates, Valor of the 13th, and... The, pr the primary module, the main the main module, uh, Heroes of the Bitter Harvest. I believe I might be receiving this at some point as well. And I also know that the, the Napoleonics uh, system is coming to me at some point once, but that's on a rotation. So it's being shipped to me by another, uh, another fan you know, who's doing some work on it or some uh, play testing or something. Uh, and so I'll have a pre-production copy of that and I'll be playing and doing video on the new Napoleonics system. Uh, we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. Really excellent, excellent production values. Uh, of course, you know, one of, one of the challenges with these, uh, these beautiful counters is that they do pop out easy. Uh, but that's okay. I can handle that uh, given the production quality and the values of everything else that's going on here. Super excited to be able to get this uh, on the table very soon. Uh, and it, and interestingly, don't forget, guys, if you're a sol you know, solo-only guy, uh, this comes with all of the solo rules as well, all of the cards for the solo system, so you don't need to buy another system to uh, their solo system to play it. Uh, it's also got all the data cards and all that sort of groovy nonsense. So if you want to play with minis, you can do that. Got some campaign cards that you can use here as well. So you can have a fantastic campaign going through uh, the whole shooting match. Wonderful, huge, big, enormous, fantastic module. I'm super impressed with everything and uh, look forward to getting it on the table and seeing the proof always with all these games. Uh, it's not just that it looks good and not just that the components are nice and all the rest of it. Uh, and I trust the system. I like the system. But do the scenarios play well? And are they well balanced? And are they interesting? And do they give some representative history? And I think, generally speaking, lock and low tactical scenarios have always been incredibly well balanced and well uh, uh, well tuned for the players so that they uh, they really enjoy what they're doing. So... I can only I can think of less than less than two or three out of the hundreds and hundreds that I've played and that I own that uh, that have been sort of wonky. So I'm looking forward to testing these guys out and I'll be given a full update and report on the scenarios I do get to the next few weeks. So there we have it. All the very best. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week and uh, uh Nice. Uh, yes, Devin is very good at scenario design. He is. Uh, so I, hopefully we'll uh, catch all of you again soon. I might do some live play with this. We'll see. I might pick that little, uh, that small one of those smaller scenarios to play with, and we'll we'll just run through some things together. Don't yell at me when I make mistakes with the rules because some rules have changed, and I just play the way I play. So it is what it is. Anyway, let's roll. Talk to you later, guys. All the best. How do I stop this damn thing? There we go. Ciao.